Taylor Parnell here and I'm so excited for today's video because today we're going to be getting into deeper about what a collar wise dog is. So if you're excited for today's video make sure you give it a big thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel down below. All those bell notifications are turned on so that you never miss a video with us. Let's get into today's video. So everyone, when we talk about a collar wise dog, what does it mean? Well, what it mean is, is that basically when you put the collar on your dog, your dog starts to listen to you. But when you take the collar off your dog, your dog starts to not listen to you. And this is something that's super hard to deal with, especially when you're trying to get progress from your dog, which is totally understandable, and we have solutions for you guys. It's gonna be the same thing as far as if your dog only listens to you when you have a treat. This is gonna be a tool-dependent dog. And as a trainer, it's your job to recognize when your dog is becoming collar-wise or tool-dependent. It's because you know that your dog is maybe only listening when it wants something back from you. So the main goal is, especially when you're be gonna be using an e-collar, is that you actually have that understanding between you and your dog. Each command is given to them and they respond whether you have a treat or a collar or no tool at all. So I really wanna give you guys a little bit of extra tips to make sure that you can build that relationship with your dog because truly the only reason that your dog will become tool dependent is because of you. And that's just simply because of a lack of interest of working with your dog or training, or maybe it's simply a reason being is that you just haven't really practiced enough and you need more. So let's go ahead and get into those different steps so that you guys can succeed more. So there's three common mistakes that I see when people are having a tool dependent dog. Sometimes we, they only use the collar when they're training and they don't leave it on in other circumstances. So they really just see their dog only participating when they have the collar on, which that's really where the collar wise comes from. Another thing is, is that sometimes, you know, people will reach for the collar in the remote only when they see the bad habit happening in that moment. You wanna be um, more of a, you know, the word I'm looking for is just kind of like so, more solution oriented to where you're having that collar on. And if that bad habit arises, you're gonna be able to correct them and show them a better habit to practice. Another really important thing that I also see is that the dogs are given a command, but the trainer doesn't follow through with it. And that's something super, super key. And that's something that I really want you guys to focus on. If you're giving a command, you want to follow through with it, either reward your dog for it to listen to the command or, you know, come back and go back to square one and really understand why your dog is not following through with it. Again, you want to be practicing with your dogs from the beginning with those treats, with the praise and reward, whether it's a toy or a pat on the shoulder. But as you start to practice more and more, don't be dependent as well on those tools. Fix with your dog those kind of communication things so that you can build your relationship and know where they're struggling and what challenges they need to become better on. The first tip I want to give you guys for your dog not to become collar wise is put that collar on throughout the day. Now what's super important is your dog should be wearing the collar when it's eating, when it's drinking, resting, playing. It should have the collar on most of the time. Now what's super important about that is that you can be able to correct that bad habit or teach your dog a command with the collar already on instead of just purposefully getting that collar out which leads into my next tip for you guys. Don't be obvious about getting the collar out and putting it on your dog. You really want to use this collar as a tool to enforce those commands or the good habits, right? So you want don't wanna get used to actually using the collar and just only putting it on for those moments. So again, remember to be discreet when you're putting the collar on your dog. Another tip that I wanted to lead in for you guys is Let's say your dog, you know, you're going through your normal daily routine with your dog and all of a sudden your dog does um, maybe the worst thing you hate. For example, starts barking at the fence and how much you hate barking at the fence. So you're going to stomp right over and grab that collar and remote and put it on in that moment just to prove a point. I don't think that's going to help you and it's not going to give you a more long-term success. So I think this is something that, again, the most important thing is to have that collar on your dog and then to follow through with having those training sessions so that you're not tool dependent. The last thing that I would recommend is just start to work with the dogs. If you start to ask a command that your dog doesn't know, you're not going to get much out of it. Work from the beginning when it comes to sit, play, stay, all of these things that you want to learn with your dog, start to enforce those things. But the biggest thing is if you start to, you know, work with your dog and train with your dog without the collar, you should finish without the collar because this is how you're going to build that relationship with your dog. And you're also going to know if your dog is succeeding and understanding what you're asking. When you start using those treats, you can ask your dog the commands, then slowly start to take away those treats. 
teammates. Maybe give them a praise, give them a ball, something to reward them. And as you're gonna step forward, you're gonna realize that this e-collar is gonna be an enforcement of those commands. It's gonna be a way for when your dog is free and loose in the area, you're gonna be able to know that you can enforce those if some you know trust is a little bit different or maybe your dog is challenged by an outside environmental thing. Last but not least, you guys, as we have the kids here with us, I want you to realize that you know, you want to make sure that you're following through with those commands, right? But you also want to remind your dog of how good they're doing. We sometimes focus so much on the negative or correcting a bad habit and all of these things that we really want to make sure that we're giving our dogs the praise that they deserve, the excitement, the great job, good boy, good girl, all of those things. Love, care, Bonnie loves her ball, we should always bring her ball, Bruce loves his treats, we'll make sure to reward him at the end of an adventure or a training session. Because through this experience of consistency and you know making sure that you show up, it's gonna build that relationship even more. And yes, I know sometimes we don't want our dogs to chase the squirrels, right? But sometimes it's good to say, okay, you can go chase the squirrel because then your dog knows, hey, my owner's gonna tell me every once in a while that I can do something. But the truth behind it is, is we want them to do it when we are saying it's okay. Not only for their safety, but to have that trust with one another. So I want you guys to understand that these tools are really going to build your relationship with your dog. You don't wanna have them to dependent on it and you don't wanna be dependent either. But the more consistent you're gonna be with them and the more you're gonna spend time on this, the better the outcome is gonna be and the more reliable your dog will be and the better your relationship will be. So thank you so much for tuning in for today's video. We always love having you guys here. Never hesitate to drop any questions down in the comments down below. Share this video with a friend if you have any other dog people in the community. We would love to make this community even more happier and larger for everyone to be enjoying their experience with their dogs. So thank you again. We are sending so much love. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and comment down below. It supports us so much and we'll see you all in the next video. Bye everybody!